Hello my friends. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. And this is going to be in reference to a lot of people's comments on learning how to meditate. How do you start? What is meditation exactly? How do we get going with it? What type of meditation should I do? Are there more than one type? So I want to start to go into some of these things in order to help you guys to achieve true peace and all the benefits that meditation can bring which it's been shown that meditation actually physically changes the brain it improves our life it relieves stress it could increase our intuition and our sensory experience as well there's so many different benefits from meditation it's truly truly something that is completely life-changing and it will help you to find the real you and understand who you really are and so how do we meditate well there's so many different ways to do it and we could break it down into a few different categories one focused attention so that's voluntarily focusing attention on a chosen object. And some examples would be you know, Zen meditation, Qigong, compassion, Vipassana. So like in Qigong, we tend to, well, we, we do have still meditation, but we also have moving meditation in Qigong. And so with the moving meditation, and really in all aspects of qigong we're focused we're focused completely on our breath and then if we are moving it's also about the motion and then there's also what's called open monitoring which is non-reactive monitoring of the content of experience from moment to moment so that's where you basically just notice the thoughts that come up and you let them go just floating down the river so you just notice your stream of thoughts and you try not to get caught up in the stream just when something arises you know a thought about cooking dinner you just notice that and you just let it go and then you just come back to center trying not to actively think about anything and then something else pops up you notice it you let it go and mindfulness is a practice in which this is practiced as was Kriya Yoga to a degree um, and then we have automatic self transcending which is transcending the steps of the meditator practice leading to pure consciousness and uh, transcendental meditation and they've also noticed in advanced Qigong practitioners that they just kind of go to this state, uh, state of almost non-activity in some ways, and uh, a tremendously powerful, life-changing experience to get into that state of mind. And so, we we have seen that different types of meditation affect the brain in different ways and affect different parts of the brain. So. It is good to practice multiple types of meditation and I myself will do that on a regular basis and I tend to like to do my Qigong in the mornings and then more at night go into more of a mindfulness at first leading to self transcending in which I start noticing I start trying to quiet the mind and just letting things go and then just by focusing in on the breath and the breath is the key to to really all meditation we really do start and finish with the breath and so it's all about quieting ourselves and you know getting out of the fight-or-flight reflex because you're either in the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system it's like a switch you just switch from one to the other so meditation will take you into the place where you're producing serotonin melatonin instead of cortisol which in and of itself is a tremendous benefit because cortisol the stress hormone yeah that does give us this boost in terms of 
when we need a boost in a life or death situation. However, so many of us are always in this state all day long, especially if you're working at a typical job where you know, you're just being asked to do a lot, you're running around, you're stressed, you have so much pressure on you. Your body is in that fight or flight response and is doing nothing but creating these stress hormones that are going to age you and cause about the deterioration of your body prematurely. So meditation could counteract that. It really can. It could at first get you to start to experience these states on a regular basis and eventually it'll lead to you being calmer all the time so that you're not going into the fight or flight mechanism when there's not really a bear chasing you down the road it's just simply your boss yelling at you or maybe an angry spouse because you burnt the the dinner you know something along those lines so we will become calmer more relaxed all the time more at peace all the time be able to come back to center when something you know does get you aggravated rightfully so at times you'll be able to come back to center so much quicker and be in a good place where you're no longer telling your body to make these stress hormones that are going to cause you premature aging disease and all sorts of problems down the line these hormones also increase the inflammatory response in the body, which end up giving us issues like arthritis and so many other digestive problems and uh, allergic problems and, and autoimmune problems. So you might not think of it right off the bat, but meditation, things like qigong and tai chi and you know proper yoga, they could counteract all those things and they could end up lengthening our life and giving us a better quality of life in and of itself. So the benefits are just so, so amazing. The mind is like water. It must be still for you to see the world as it truly is. And unfortunately, most of us never see the world as it truly is. We are constantly living through our left brain jibber jabbing just constant talking and you know what your brain says 80 percent of its content is the same 20 percent non-stop over and over and over your brain i mean just goes through the same thoughts all the time every single day you know oh i hate monday oh i hate going to work oh i hate seeing this client today you know, oh, I hate the traffic on, on Friday rush hours. You know, it's always the same things. Oh, she's making that again for dinner. I hate that. You know, it whatever it is. Oh, my God, here we are. We're going to wait two hours again to get into this restaurant. You know, wh whatever it is, it's the same sort of thoughts that constantly come up. Our minds are like broken records. And it really does us so good when we just turn it off for a bit. So... One thing to, to realize, there, there's several things to realize, but first, primarily, you are not the body. You're not the body. The body is yours, but you are not the body. And when we say that, we even mean the brain. You're not the brain. Your consciousness is not the brain. Your consciousness is something that can and does operate outside of your brain. And it will go on when your brain has decayed and is no longer physically there. Your consciousness will still be there. So there's some things we have to realize. So to understand the immeasurable, the mind must be extraordinarily quiet and still. And that's Krishnamurti. And if you've ever read any of his works, just you know, a very, very brilliant individual. For those who have an intense urge for spirit and wisdom, it sits near them waiting. And this is from the Yoga Sutras, which are classic works of incredible depth and thought. Meditation is not a solution of any problem. It solves nothing. It simply helps you to get rid of the mind. 
which is the problem creator. It simply helps you to slip out of the mind like a snake slips out of the old skin. And so we are, most of the time, we are slaves to our mind. We are slaves to our thoughts. Yet we are the masters of those thoughts. We should be the masters of those thoughts. We should not let the creation run away and be out of control of the creator. For you are the creator. You have to recapture your creative powers. You have to realize exactly who you are, exactly what you are. And that can only be done when you're still. That can only be done by going within. You will never get that without. You will never discover that through anything that lies without what is inside. Meditation is the state of no mind, not of silent mind, not of healthy mind, not of concentrated mind, no. Meditation is the state of no mind, no society within you, no conditioning within you, just you, with your pure consciousness. And that's Osho. And so that last part is the key consciousness because that is what you are your consciousness you're not the body this will come to you and you will realize this it'll be the most amazing thing you've ever realized that I'm not the body I might be in here but I am not the body the body is not me I am much more expansive than the body before the body was I am grasp those words really think about it some of you might be saying sacrilege and going to pick up stones but it's it's true and that is what was said and meant by the by the master who said that before the body was I am it's a truth that's right out there and that's for every one of us Buddha was asked, what have you gained from meditation? He replied, nothing. However, Buddha said, let me tell you what I lost. Anger, anxiety, depression, insecurity, fear, to, fear of old age and death. That's definitely a really good benefit. Silence is an empty space. Space is the home of the awakened mind. And we are travelers of both time and space. That is what we are. And time itself is an illusion, a construct of the physical mind, because it can't comprehend the vastness of the all. But that doesn't mean you can't comprehend the vastness of the all and the reality that lies at the core of all things in your natural state. And that can be achieved through meditation. Watch, witness, your body is not you. Your mind is not you. You are just a pure witness. Your consciousness yourself, it's, that's all you are, is consciousness. So ultimately, you're not this third dimensional matter. You're occupying this. It's as if you're playing a video game. You need an avatar. You need to create something in which to play in this realm. And that is what you have done. You have created this body you are now inhabiting in order that you could have a 3D, a third dimensional experience as a human. But that's not who you really are. That's not what you really are. This is only a temporary state of being. This is not our permanent state. This is not what we are eternally. What we are eternally is something much more, much more vast. So keep that in mind. Again, you are not your body. Meditation brings wisdom. Lack of meditation leaves ignorance. Know well what leads you forward and what holds you back. And choose the path that leads to, w to wisdom. If you correct your mind, the rest of your life will fall into place, Lao Tzu. The problem lies in the ego, and 
so many great minds have realized this. It, it, it's all about the ego. And the ego, we see, the ego plays out its drama all across the face of our world. It's playing out its drama right now in our political leaders who are so laden with ego, they have no clue about the consciousness that lies within. They are so lost in their ego side that it's, it's, it's really beyond pity. They have no clue of the, the great truths of being. And they let themselves be guided by the little ego that fades away as the body disappears. It's only temporary. But the self, the consciousness, that's eternal. That's something that goes on forever. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. Lao Tzu. That's basically what the Buddha discovered when he went deep into meditation. You should sit in meditation for 20 minutes a day unless you're too busy. Then you should sit for an hour. It's an old Zen saying. Because we really are never too busy when you get down to it. The things that we go running around in this world concerned with are, when you break it down, they're all about the ego. For the most part. We, we spend too much time just covering our basic needs. As Christ said, you know, do you see the birds and the animals and the bees doing that, running around fretting? You know, oh my gosh, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. No, they're just simply trusting, and they know that they'll be provided for. Quantum physics tells us that nothing that is observed is unaffected by the observer. That statement from science holds an enormous and powerful insight. It means that everyone sees a different truth because everyone is creating what they see. So that is huge and powerful. And really in here, the key word too is observer. So nothing truly is unless it's observed. And what are we really? What are we really? What do you think we are? We're the observer. It's not your body that's observing. That's just an avatar. That's just something that you're using for this experience. You lie far beyond your body. Your consciousness itself and your consciousness experiencing its own creation because you are the observer and you create your reality by your act of observing and by your expectations. Now we are all doing this. So there are many forces in play creating the reality. But yet still, how is it that some people are happy every single day? I have a friend that's very, very enlightened and she amazes me every single day. She never sees anything that's negative. And so her reality is one every single day of bliss. And truly I'm completely amazed by her because unfortunately I still have a lot of work to do and I am still affected by our reality. Even though I know better, I still let it get the better of me many, many times. And she never seems to. So I jokingly called her my guru and she was shocked and said, no, 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 don't ever say that. No, no, no. I'm not worthy of that. But this is somebody that has truly an enlightened experience. You know, she, she has experienced that. And she has experienced this by a transmission of energy from her guru who awakened her. And people that have kundalini experience, and kundalini is the life force, it's the power, it's, it's known as the serpent energy. 
and it's not an evil serpent it's, it has nothing to do with reptilians or nagas or anything like that it's it's the life force itself it's the evolutionary energy that lies within each of us that when it's awakened we become multi-dimensional and we truly see and recognize the illusions that are all around us and we're able to strip it away and see the truth that is around us and that is that we are all ultimately one and that is that it really is a beautiful creation and we are creating this together we have tremendous power tremendous power and as more and more of us wake up and we could view it as coming online with the real reality that we have before us our power grows and it will grow exponentially because in the unity consciousness that we are going to create and that is our destiny we are going to be unified in a positive manner and we're no longer going to be controlled by the dark energies that have controlled this planet and this section of our galaxy for thousands of years these dark energies are no longer going to hold sway over us and we're already moving into energies and an area where the light is increasing and this is not late for you to fear as you have been conditioned to fear if you come out of the judeo-christian you know monotheistic tradition um, and these things have been done on purpose there is truth in all the world's religions but yet in reality we don't really need any of the religions we need to recognize our unity we need to recognize the oneness of all things doesn't mean that you can't embrace your religious traditions it's beautiful to go ahead and embrace it and give thanks for it and and give thanks for your heritage give thanks for the things you do whatever ceremonies it is whatever special meals and sabbaths and shabbats and you know whatever celebrations and holidays you have you know just go ahead and enjoy it that's beautiful there's nothing wrong and nobody says you have to give up anything just recognize the fact that underlying everything there is an underlying sense of oneness and ultimately we need to get together and need to realize that we're all individual cells in a larger body and it will be of extreme beneficence for us to become one and to recognize the oneness of all things so my friends one of the things that we could do the form of meditation that I do the most uh, is basically one that's concerned with generating life force and bringing life force into me and ultimately we are living in an ocean of this life force called ki, chi, prana, vril. There's so many different names for it. But it is the matrix of life that's all around us, that surrounds us. You know, they did a good explanation of it in Star Wars with the Force. That is reality. This life force is all around us. And ultimately, at the core, all you and I are is energy, conscious energy that's what we are these physical bodies will go our consciousness our energy will stay energy can't be created or destroyed it just changes forms and so we have these chakras and chakras are energy centers and they are vortices as above so below when we see uh, tornadoes when we see cyclones and when we see hurricanes we're looking at exactly what a chakra looks like. It's a swirling vortice of energy that is pulling energy into the body all the time. Not just the physical body. There are many bodies, many layers to you. Some of the best psychics have been able to see 15 to 16 different layers to your body. Each layer represents a different dimension of consciousness. And thus, this is what is meant by the fact that we are multi-dimensional beings when we talk about those entities that are the interdimensional dark ones that have been controlling us 
Yeah, we could think of them as existing in the fourth dimension, one notch above us. Um, and then also having the ability to come into this dimension and affect us. Now we operate on many different dimensions. And as we were saying, you know, there's actually studies that show that science can tell that we, we have the ability to operate on 11 different dimensions from what they've discovered so far. And the truth is, it's even more than that. And so what these chakras do is they are nourishing not just the physical body, but the energy bodies as well. So they are nourishing us on many different dimensions and many different levels of consciousness. And these are the seven main chakras that we talk about all the time. But in reality, there are hundreds of chakras in the body. There are chakras on every fingertip. There are chakras on every toe. There's two very important chakras in your feet. There are chakras on your palms that are also very important, especially if you're doing energy work. And there are chakras in many other areas as well. All of your organs, all of your major organs have their own chakras. So many, many chakras. But the seven that we see here are the key ones and the main ones. So you could think of them as the main energy channels with countless other ones going on. And you have the equivalent of a vascular network in your, in your body that's made entirely of energy. And in uh, the yogic tradition, you know, they're called nadis. And we could think of them as basically a energetic version of the vascular network that channels energy to and from different areas of the body. So when I'm focusing on meditation, what I will generally do, it's my personal preference to start with Qigong just because I know I'm opening up my 12 primary meridians. And now I've included at, in this video at the bottom several other videos I've done. One is a full Qigong workout, which takes a little over an hour. That's a very, very complete workout. There's a 20-minute version, which basically has warm-ups, plus what we call the eight pieces of brocade. That would be wonderful to do every morning because that will really give you great benefit. Keep your your meridians open, help your chakras, and basically it's it's almost like going and getting an acupuncture session. Um, it's it's going to have extreme benefits for you in the long run. It'll loosen up your fascia, which is your connective tissue, help keep you balanced, strong, healthy, flexible, and vibrant. And then I also have a couple other in there for you as well for different meditations. And I'm going to be doing some new ones as well. So what I like to focus first is, is on doing Qigong and just basically feeling the energy flow. Because when I ruptured my discs, I couldn't move. I actually couldn't even get into bed for two weeks. I ruptured L4 and L5. I was squatting 500 pounds. And uh, that was back when I was like around 29 years old. And so I read about Bruce Francis, who is a Qigong master. And... Uh, he basically healed himself by just concentrating on drawing energy into the space and visualizing it healing. With his mind, he visualized the energy going into the discs and regenerating the disc material, the discs becoming decompressed, expanding, and then going back to normal. And so he did this with the breath, and he consciously breathed in and drew in life force and sent it mentally into the spine and just in a matter of a couple of days he was up off the ground and i found that with me in a matter of about a day and a half i was up off the ground and i was walking around again and then i went and just started practicing qigong on a regular basis and have basically stayed with it uh, so that was a long time ago and 23 years ago um, that is key. And then when I got Lyme's disease, all of a sudden I had lymph nodes that were swollen everywhere and felt like I was 80 years old overnight. And again, I did the energy. I did the Qigong, drew in life force, focused strongly on building up my energy levels, especially focusing in on the root chakra. There's different things to focus in on uh, depending on what you have going on. 
The root chakra, which is the red one at the base, that is concerned with the physical body, with vitality. Now, there's other smaller chakras that we work on as well. My spleen was enlarged tremendously because of you know the infection going on. So I worked on my spleen meridian, which is something that is something that an acupuncturist would do as well. And we do that in medical qigong. So we want to balance that out. Then the triple warmer could be very active when you're having this. And the triple warmer is a different non-physical organ system in Chinese medicine. So there, there's a lot to all that. I'm not going to go into all that now. That's way more advanced. But I just want to start out by focusing on the fact that we have these chakras. And one of the things that you're going to do over time, you're going to learn how to breathe into these chakras. And it will feel as if you're breathing into your nose. You will feel the energy flowing into it as easily as taking a breath through your nose. It'll be that easy to breathe into the chakras, correct any imbalances that are there, and strengthen the organs related to them. So this is these are key thoughts that we will get into a lot more depth in following follow-up um, videos on this. But just to give you a, a, a go over on these, the root chakra is all about physical vitality, the uh, sacral chakra, and all these are connected to nerve plexus. So there are nerve plexus where these chakras are that science knows about. And so major nerve plexuses that go and feed internal organs. Sacral chakra uh, has to do with the sexual organs. It, it's also do with expressing yourself in that way, pleasures on the earthly plane, and so much more. The solar plexus chakra, digestive system, it, it governs also about being comfortable with who you are in this life. Uh, it's like the I am center. So this is all about this incarnation and being comfortable with who you are in this life. And also about the stomach and digestion. And then we have the heart chakra. It's the emotional center. It's in charge of the, the heart and the lungs. And then we have the throat chakra, which is all about the thyroid gland and your communication center, your verbal communication center. And for me, this was locked up because I wasn't speaking my truth for, you know, like 40 something years of my life. I did not do what I was supposed to do. And so I was diagnosed with a goiter back when I was 17 years old, which is in a large thyroid. And uh, my thyroid function is fine. I'm speaking my truth now. I'm doing what I have to do. We will find that if we are not on our path, we will have a dysfunction in the area which is relating to our path. So a lot of times, like if you have stomach issues going on, it could be related to the fact that you're not comfortable in your own skin. You're not happy with yourself in some way, shape, or form with who you are in this life. And so that's a big question to look at. But the Chinese, and especially in Taoist practice, uh, believe that pretty much all disease manifests from imbalanced emotions and emotional issues. So it, it's good to look at the root cause because in Western medicine, they just cover things up without, you know, they give you stuff, drugs that will basically cover up symptoms but never get to the root. And then we have the third eye, which is all about intuition, and it also is governing the pineal gland. So melatonin and serotonin production. And it's all about intuition, insight, higher faculties, and the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is our connection to spirit and the higher divine realms, and our connection to our higher self and to source itself. And it's also governed, uh, governs the apophis, or the... Uh, pituitary so it's the master gland so chakras are very important now this is what's called the bubbling wells point so you want to when you're doing like a standing meditation like qigong you want to be balanced and have even distribution unless you're going from a motion from one side to another and then we're always we're always balancing ourselves we're always up and flowing and it feels so good when you get into the flow of this so it's also the K1 point, and the K1 point is an acupuncture, and that's the first kidney point on the kidney meridian. And the kidneys are very important because that is where the original life force that we get from our parents is stored, in the kidneys. And what zaps the kidneys more than anything? Fear. So we shouldn't be in fear. Now, when you breathe, 
in pretty much all the meditation practices I do, besides something that's called TUMO, which is very, very useful for drawing up tremendous amounts of energy in a rapid succession. Everything is abdominal breathing. So when we breathe in, our chest basically stays flat. Our diaphragm moves downwards. The belly expands like a baby's belly to the front, but also feel expansion on the sides and in the lower back and the spine as well. And that's the proper way to breathe. And when you breathe that way, it's going to get you out of the fight or flight response. So when you start breathing this way, it's going to shift you from making cortisol, the stress hormone, into making serotonin or melatonin. And those are basically feel-good uh, hormones. And of course, melatonin regulates the sleep cycle. So practicing this will, will really, you'll sleep better and you'll find that you won't need to sleep as long to feel completely rested. But abdominal breathing is the key and that's what we focus on. Breathe inwards. Now you, you really don't want to move the chest like this diagram shows. This is a Western diagram. Uh, but what I wanted you to see is the movement of the diaphragm. The diaphragm moves down. The abdomen expands. That's the key thought. So when we're breathing in, we breathe all the way down and in. And we feel that bubbling wells point, those K1 points, open up. And I always visualize when I'm doing Qigong, um, I'm, unless I'm purging, which means getting rid of negative energy, which is something we do first all the time. We get rid of any stagnant negative energy. After that, we go in and we start to draw energy. You know, we first, we open up the meridians through the eight pieces of brocade, and then we start to gather. And we're always sinking our roots into the earth. Be like a tree and, f and have your roots go down into the earth. And there is tremendous power in that. And uh, I had two of the subscribers um, send me a video, the exact same video at the same time. And it was on grounding. And the scientific studies that are showing how beneficial grounding is. And in one, the opening segment of this movie, they show a guy who's living somewhere, I think it was Alaska or, or something like that. And it's 30 below actual temp and he's, he's sick as hell. And what does he do? He goes under the house and he goes into this dirt patch and he takes all his clothes off and lies in it and then he comes away feeling better and his aches and pains are gone. So that's a little extreme. Uh, I'm not telling you guys to do that. Please don't do that. Uh, yeah, yes, if it's not 30 below, yeah, go out there and get into the dirt. Again, I feel almost like it's a conspiracy that they want us to stay away from the things that strengthen us. They put all this fear into us that we, we lather ourselves with sunscreen and some of which might be stuff that actually causes cancer in the first place because of the chemicals. When we need the sun, we need the vitamin D, the sun brings us life force. It, it's, it is the source of the life force, a, a big chunk of the life force in our lives. Not only that, but the sun brings us energy and information. And that is another secret that you will come upon as you go deeper into meditation. You will actually get or be able to get direct messages from the sun itself through meditation and through consciously taking it in. There is, and I've done videos on this, there is a practice called sun gazing which is done just when the sun is rising and just when the sun is setting and in it you consciously take in with your breath your inhale you're drawing the life force in from the sun as you look at the sun and you only do this when you know it's only maybe like 20 minutes right after sunrise 20 minutes right before and it's very nourishing and there are breatharians people that don't eat food anymore that this is how they get their nourishment and that sounds extreme and that sounds unbelievable and last time I made that statement some people were really trying to chew me out saying I was promoting it and believe me that's that takes a long time to get to that state of being and it probably is not for everybody in this life there are 
perhaps only a small percentage of people that can't achieve something like that in this life because it takes tremendous dedication. But even so, it will open your pineal gland. And you can look at the sun just when it's setting and, um, and just when it first comes up. And again, I'm not advocating that you guys do that. I'm just saying that many people practice that practice. And it is one of the practices that will open the pineal gland up wide. And it's amazing what, what you will see when your pineal gland is wide open. Just amazing. So when we breathe, and when we're doing qigong, we're breathing into and taking the life force up from the earth. Because the earth is full of qi. It's full of so much qi that is so healing to the physical body. There are different types of qi. Earthly qi, and then you have cosmic qi, also from the heavens. And so when we visualize the cosmic qi coming into our body, we do it through primarily through the crown chakra, which is at the top of the head. And again, I have videos that go into that in depth. So the earth chi is so nourishing to the earthly body. The cosmic chi will feed the, the spiritual body, also the emotional bodies as well, and the mental. So when we breathe and we're consciously drawing it in both ways, then we are really benefiting ourselves. And I do have practices that I do um, that are basically right at, of all about that. And it's a tremendous practice to do. So remember, you're a spiritual being having a human experience. You're not a human being having a spiritual experience. Just the opposite. So everybody out there, just take a moment to close your eyes Put your hands together comfortably, or you might want to touch a finger to a thumb, index finger or middle, middle finger, spine straight, just relax. Breathe in through your nose nice and deep. Allow your diaphragm to go downwards. Feel your belly expand. Feel expansion at the sides and the back. And then exhale. And remember, your chest stays still. And let's just breathe, and there's different patterns we could do, and I would recommend doing a pattern, just following your breath what counts. This is the first thing that you should really do, is just to still the mind, just follow the breath, and simply breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, and then breathe out, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, breathe out, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, and just keep along with that pattern. In time, as you go, you might find that you automatically want to extend it, and perhaps you're breathing in for six, and then you're holding for two, and then you're letting it go for six. So it's just that type of pattern will calm and still the mind. And that will get you into the right state. And then just whatever thoughts come up, just let them just go on by. Notice them and just let them go. And just keep coming back to your breath. And then in time, you won't even have to really think about counting anymore. The counting will pass away. And then you'll have stillness. And then you might have here and there a thought coming up. Just watch it. Let it go. And just let your mind just drop. And in time, you'll have bigger and bigger gaps where you're not even thinking about anything. And then you'll notice that over time, your perceptions will increase. And all of a sudden, you're feeling a lot more. You're sensing a lot more. Your mind is quiet. And there's things that can pop in. And some of these things that pop in may not actually be your mind. But you have become calm enough, quiet enough, receptive enough to receive messages now. Mm -hmm. Messages that can come from source, can come from your higher self, can come from what we call your guides, your spiritual guides, can come from beings on the angelic realm. And there's nothing to fear with this. Nothing at all. 
just be calm and keep going back to your breath if you find that your conscious consciousness has has gone too far off so that is one way of doing it now when i do it i'm always thinking about building chi uh, for the most part or at, at least for part of my practice until i feel vibrant and all and strong and then i'll just let that go and then just simply sit still in the mo moment and just let everything just melt away into nothingness and it's a beautiful thing to experience and then i i just sense all the layers of my energy body so much that my physical body is pretty much n almost non-existent i don't even notice it anymore i am much more expansive and my consciousness extends out so far and that is something that will come in time so i just wanted to give you a little bit of a primer today on this and remember the big truth is ultimately that we are all one the only thing that separates us is egos beliefs and fears and you know negative ones of those type of things ultimately what you discover is we're all one a unified field of consciousness and that's all that there is is consciousness separateness is an illusion and it takes a long time in most cases to get that understanding and to really experience it but the only way you experience things is by going within to experience what you really are what is the true you you must go within to find out. So my friends, I hope this was helpful. There's going to be a lot more videos coming with a lot more in-depth techniques and specific methods and specific topics. As always, my friends, support the channel, please. Uh, go ahead and thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and share with as many people as possible. As always, love and light to you. My love is with you. And I look forward to seeing you guys all again very, very soon. And as always, leave comments and let me hear what you think. Take care, my friends. Namaste.